Hi, I'm Sanjeev Jayaratnam and welcome to my channel, Learning with Sanjeev. What do Alexander the Great, Mahatma Gandhi, Winston Churchill, Steve Jobs and Abraham Lincoln have in common? They were all fantastic leaders. So when we look at history, we are able to see some great leaders in history and learn from them, learn from their experiences. That's what we are going to talk about in this video. We are going to talk about five leaders and what made them special. Learn from them, even if they lived thousands of years ago. So stay with me right through the end. So if you look at the first leader on our list, Alexander the Great of Macedonia. Lots of people think that Alexander was actually from Greece. No, <laughs> he was from a country adjoining Greece called Macedonia. He was the king of Macedonia, inherited the kingdom from his father Philip, who was poisoned, they say. So what, what was special about Alexander? He had a really, really clear vision of what he wanted to achieve. And he was able to unite his people and his generals to support him in achieving his vision. And when we talk of modern leaders, every single leader needs to have a clear, compelling vision, which is then going to mobilize the whole team, the whole organization to be behind him and achieve this vision, isn't it? Compelling vision. Compelling vision becomes so, so important. And it's up to the leader to really inspire people with his vision of the future. What does he see? What does he want uh, things to be like? And I too have had a vision with the teams that I have led the many choirs that I led and we took them to international level, international standard, we had a clear vision. This is what we are going to do. We want to bring the choir up to this level. We want to go out and win competitions. Clear vision. And even when it was children in the choir, children of 10 to 14 years old or teenagers or adults or young adults, when the vision was clear, it was very easy to mobilize the entire choir towards the vision. So coming back to Alexander, when he was just 20 years old, he inherited the throne of Macedonia from his father, Philip. Instead of just maintaining his kingdom as it was, he dreamt of something bigger. He wanted a kingdom, an empire that stretched all the way from Greece to the ends of the known world. And actually when he ended, he had gone into India as well. So one night around the campfire, sitting down with his friends and his generals, he was telling them about this vision not just conquering territories, but unifying, bringing together diverse cultures under one empire and blending the East and West. And he was the first person to do this uh, very successfully. And uh, they say that one day he was actually crying uh, because he didn't have fresh worlds to conquer. And inspired by his words, his troops rallied behind him, generals rallied behind him, and they marched across deserts, across so many thousands of kilometers and conquered so many territories because his vision was so clear. So one, one famous quote of Alexander, he says, I am not afraid of an army of lions led by a sheep, but I am afraid of an army of sheep led by a lion. So it's all about the leader. If the army of sheep are led by a lion, well, that army could still be successful because the lion is really going to inspire and motivate that group of sheep. <laughs> so strong leadership. Alexander was a very strong leader and no sooner he died really, he died at a very early age in his, in his early 30s. No sooner he died, uh, his whole empire disintegrated. One of his generals took over Egypt, Ptolemy, and became the first Ptolemy Pharaoh of uh, Egypt one of Cleopatra's successors, I think. So that was the whole empire disintegrated after Alexander died. So a very short space of time, Alexander's empire lasted, but he did create it with his strong, compelling vision. When I was working at IFS and we were doing ERP implementations, it had to be a clear vision. This is where we want to help the organization to be. This is what we want to do for our client. This is how we want to implement this system. Clear vision, we could mobilize the entire team of software engineers, project managers, everyone to go achieve that vision. So up to the leader to have a clear, compelling vision. And that's Alexander the Great. Number two in our list of great leaders from history whom we can learn from, Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the US. 
And Abraham Lincoln is all about leadership in crisis. His life itself was a crisis from beginning to end, really. He went through so much of personal problems. They say he had uh, so many of his family members dying. Uh, it was a great struggle to get where he got. He, he, he grew up in poverty, uh, in very, very, very uh, poor circumstances. Finally became the president of the U.S. And of course, you know, he was also assassinated. So what we can learn from Abraham Lincoln is the importance of resilience, empathy, and making tough decisions during times of crisis. Abraham Lincoln was the president of the U.S. during the Civil War, and he really wanted to preserve the Union. So preserve the Union, the United States, because the South wanted to break away, the Confederate States wanted to break away and create their own country. And Lincoln was the president of all the states, and he was trying to, you know, keep it together. So then at one point, the South decided, no, we are going to fight for our freedom, a fight for independence and break away from the Union. And that was the Civil War. And at one point, actually, uh, Lincoln changed the whole uh, focus or the context of the war and said, no, it's going to be about the freedom of the slaves. This is what we are fighting for. We are fighting for freedom of slaves. And that, again, compelling vision as well, that was, again, able to help to get all the northern states to be more motivated to somehow win the war. Lincoln famously said, I am not bound to win, but I am bound to be true. I am not bound to succeed, but I am bound to live by the light that I have. That's, that's a tremendous saying, isn't it? I am not bound to win, but I am bound to be true. I need to be true. I need to be true to myself. I need to be true to my values. I need to be true to who I stand for as a leader, as a human being. Lots of times today we don't have leaders who stand by anything. What are their values? It's, it's very dodgy, very hazy. What are the values? How can we follow a leader whose values are not clear? We need to follow someone whose values are really, really clear, isn't it? And that's so important. Integrity. Doing the right thing even when no one is watching. And it was very clear that Lincoln had very, very high integrity. As we go into our own local presidential election, my hope is that we get a president, no matter who he or she is, who has high integrity. Because if the integrity is there, the honesty is there, lots of other things will fall into place. So Lincoln's words reflect his deep commitment to doing what he believed was right, even in the face of failure. And that's, that's really important, isn't it? So in the midst of the American Civil War, Lincoln was facing tremendous pressure from all around him. Union was, was fractured, it was going to break apart, was on the brink of breaking apart. And after a series of defeats, the war was on and Lincoln was losing in 1862, a series of defeats. Lincoln was told by his advisors, okay, why don't we negotiate peace with the Confederate Army, with the Southern States? And even, you know, let them do what they want. Instead, what did Lincoln do? <laughs> he made the courageous decision to issue the what is called the Emancipation Proclamation, saying, from this day onwards, all slaves are free. He just made the law, put it into law. So the famous day of Jubilee, where the slaves were, were made free. This bold move redefined the war as a fight for human liberty and not, not just preserving the Union. Preserving the Union, yes, it's a great idea, but human liberty is something stronger, isn't it? Something more passionate, something anyone can actually get behind those type of values, that type of a vision. That was really the turning point and it led to the preservation of the Union and the abolition of slavery. So Lincoln's experience and his, uh, what he went through, leadership in times of turmoil and terms of, in times of crisis, tell us that in, especially in times of crisis, leaders need to be resilient, need to be able to bounce back, need to be strong, need to show their followers, look, I will lead you out of this. I know where I'm going, I know what we are going to do, and also be empathetic, feel for what others are feeling, because people are all going through times of strife. We saw so many leaders really up their game during COVID. When people were worried about their lives, people were worried about their livelihood. We saw leaders becoming very empathetic, really becoming resilient. I'm, I'm sure the leaders were also scared. I know I was as a, as a leader. But we also survived through COVID. We didn't let a single person in our small team go. Everybody was kept on and we went through the difficult times together and we succeeded as a team. And actually we grew as well, which is absolutely fantastic. So leadership in tough times. We sometimes need to make unpopular decisions. 
But that's really the role of the leader, isn't it? Doing what the leader thinks is right, finally. And taking the blame for things when they go wrong as well. So we need as leaders in tough times to take decisions that resonate with our core values, the core values of the leader. Then there is strong leadership and people can get behind those core values. So that was about Abraham Lincoln, leadership in crisis. How do you handle it? You have strong values, anything is possible. The third fantastic example is Mahatma Gandhi, whose leadership was all about actually leading by example. So he proved how the power of leading by example can galvanize even millions of people to stand behind him. Leading by example, walking the talk. So Gandhi's commitment was to non-violence and to get independence for India through non-violence. And he actually lived the principles that he preached. So when we look at our modern leaders as well, our leaders need to walk the talk. Uh, lots of leaders, lots of managers say, I have an open door policy. You can walk into my office at any time if you want to want to talk to me. But whenever someone wants to talk to them, goes up to the office, the door is locked. <laughs> so walk to talk is not there. Some leaders say, look, punctuality is so important. But the leader is never punctual himself, doesn't walk the talk. Leaders say honesty is very important. But when a, somebody calls them, they tell their secretary to say, look, I'm not here. So we don't walk the talk. Leaders need to walk the talk, stand up for what is right and, sh and lead by example. Then we can inspire trust from our followers. So the story of Mahatma Gandhi, 1930, he initiated the famous Salt March, a 240 mile walk to the Arabian Sea to protest the British monopoly on salt. Gandhi was then 61 and he led the walk himself. Imagine 61 and you're walking 240 miles in the hot sun, <laughs> barefoot and just with a simple staff in his, in his hand, a simple man. Along the way, he started on his own, the few people along the way, thousands of Indians just kept on coming, adding on to his, the crowd following him. And ultimately there were thousands of people who walked to the sea uh, together. Gandhi went to the sea, picked up uh, some salt, just to show silent protest, defying British laws, just a small act of civil disobedience. And this small act actually ignited a nationwide movement, demonstrating the power of non-violence and personal sacrifice. And that Gandhi's leadership and his personal example inspired millions of people to follow his path of peaceful protest, which ultimately led to India's independence. So one of the most famous statements that Gandhi made, we all know, is be the change that you want to see in the world. And lots of times we expect others to change, to make things better, but we refuse to change ourselves. So Gandhi said, no, you want things to change, you change yourself. You change first. And even in our country, when things were going wrong, I decided I'm going to change. We want things to change around us. We need to lead by example. We need to be more disciplined ourselves. And I decided I'm going to be more disciplined. I want others to be disciplined. Let me start with myself. Lead by example. You want others to be punctual? Let's become punctual first. Lead by example. So that was Gandhi. So Gandhi's life really exemplifies the principle, really shows this principle that true leadership comes from example, leading by example, nothing better. More than all the words the leader can say, what the leader can do is demonstrate what he wants by his own actions, by his own life. And then people are going to want to follow more. Make sense? Winston Churchill is our number four, number four on our list of great leaders that we can learn from, from history. And what Winston Churchill really teaches us is the power of communication. How a leader who can communicate well can get a lot done by even a whole population, which is what Winston Churchill did as he was the Prime Minister of Britain during the Second World War. Terrible time, people dying all over the world and Winston Churchill has to lead this nation to war. And it was his words, his speeches. Uh, Churchill himself says that he spent many hours sometimes on his speeches, even changing one sentence here and there, looking at it, speaking it out aloud, seeing how it sounds, being meticulous in crafting the words of his speeches. And his speeches have stood the test of time. Even today, people study his speeches. Look at, okay, the impact he made, the words that he used in this impact that he made. So the story is in 1940, early years of, the, of World War II, uh, UK basically, United Kingdom stood alone. France had just fallen to Germany and the US had not joined the war yet. British people were demoralized, they were scared, they were wondering what's going to happen and Winston Churchill was the newly appointed Prime Minister and he spoke to the nation, he addressed the nation 
with a speech that is now famous. His speech, just to paraphrase, he said, We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the land and grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. And that's also much of a great speech, isn't it? Repeating some of the words over and over again. And in this speech, the little example I gave you, the little extract of his speech that I gave you, he repeats, we shall fight, we shall fight. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight in the fields. We shall fight in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall fight everywhere. We shall never surrender. So Churchill spoke with such conviction and with such power and impact that the people really galvanized, that, that he was able to galvanize the whole population behind him to stand as one nation and to actually finally defeat Germany. And wasn't that great? The power of communication. In one of his uh, famous statements, he says, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. And I think that's an important lesson for all of us. Sometimes as leaders, as human beings, as parents, as fathers, things go wrong and we think that's the end. But it's nothing is ever final until we lay, until we die and there's then it's over. But even actually that's not final, isn't it? Because it goes on. But nothing is ever, ever final. So don't give up. Don't give up. They say the show is not over until the fat lady sings. The famous uh, story from opera singing. Uh, so don't, don't give up. Don't give up until the end. Things can always change. Things can always uh, be better. And learning from other leaders that we just spoke about. Abraham Lincoln, lead by example. Stand up for your values. So Churchill was all about the power of communication and again leadership in crisis leadership in turbulent times uh, there is an overlap there as well but a great great leader go listen to some of his speeches you'll definitely be inspired last leader we are going to talk about we are coming back to the corporate sector the late great steve jobs what we can learn from steve jobs is innovation and risk taking he took a lot of risks he came out with products before the consumer even realized that they needed such a product. Jobs had a clear vision for Apple, again vision, and a relentless pursuit of innovation, what he believed in, his values, his dream. Today, the leaders all around us, really, you and me as well, we need to take risks. We need to have a clear vision, we need to take risks, we need to keep changing, we need to innovate. Even today, business that I lead, we are changing. We are innovating. We are trying to come out with new products. We can't stand still. We have to do something different. In a changing world, if we do not change, we are going to become obsolete, isn't it? We need to innovate. We need to take risks. Some of the things we come out with would fail for sure. But it's like Michael Jordan says, I missed every single one of the shots I never took. <laughs> so Michael Jordan, the basketball player says, yes, of the shots I took, I succeeded with some percentage and I missed some of the shots. So maybe if let's say 50, 50, 50, just for argument's sake, I missed 50% of the shots I took, but I missed 100% of the shots I never took. So if we innovate, we come out with a new product, there is a chance that it will fail, of course. But if we never come out with any new product, it's 100% sure it will never succeed because there is no chance that a product that you never launch, that you never innovate is going to succeed. So 100% failure rate. <laughs> so we have to take risks. That's the learning here. We have to take risks. So in the late 1990s, after returning to Apple, after he was, you know, fired, as the, even he was the founder, he was fired. And then Apple needed him back. He came back and really turned the whole company uh, around. So it was Steve Jobs who came out with the iPod, the iPad, the iPhone, all of that was uh, Steve Jobs. He realized that the company needed something groundbreaking, groundbreaking, revolutionary to regain its position in the market. And he came out with the iPod, first of all. It was a very risky venture. Apple had never developed a product like this before. It was, it was into computers. A market for portable music players was uncertain. He wasn't sure whether people would go for it. However, he pushed forward, thinking that people would embrace the idea of having their entire music library on a small device, which they can put in their pocket. <laughs> Fantastic, isn't it? Apple never looked back after that. And also, if you go and watch some of uh, Steve Jobs' speeches, we see that he was a great communicator as well. He launched some fantastic products and whenever he would launch a product, he would use big emotional words to really get the audience excited. He would say something like, today I have a fantastic, 
phenomenal new product to show you. He wouldn't say, you know, today I'm launching a new product or a good product. He would always say something like a phenomenal product. And so before he could even show the audience what this product is, people on the edge of their seat wondering, wow, what's this fantastic new product that Steve Jobs is going to actually launch now? So he had created that excitement even before unveiling the product by the power of his words. And that's also really important, right? He was a great communicator as well. So don't be scared to take risk. We discussed about five leaders today and we learned something from each of them. Alexander the Great, how he had a clear vision. Abraham Lincoln, leadership in crisis. Mahatma Gandhi, sure leading by example. Winston Churchill, power of communication. And then Steve Jobs, innovation and uh, risk taking. So I hope you enjoyed this little video clip. We can always learn from leaders in history. This will come before us. What are the challenges they face? Because challenges are going to be there every day. There's going to be leadership in crisis every day. There's going to be the need for communication every day. There's going to be the need for leading by example every day. There's going to be the need for standing up for your values every day. And there's going to be the need for innovation and risk taking every day. So if you like this video, please do give a thumbs up. Press on that like button right there. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any uh, other videos put out. Uh, hopefully learning something along the way as well. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay safe and stay blessed. Till the next time.